At some point in your life when it's been cold outside, you've probably rubbed your hands together to get them warm. And why does that happen? Well, why do they get warm? Well, the answer is friction. In this video, we'll define what friction is. We'll identify the factors that affect it in case you ever wanted to increase or decrease friction. And then we'll explain how friction creates heat. You may know what friction is because you've been taught it at some point, but really like at the microscopic level, what's happening? Why do things kind of slow down when they rub together? Well, if you look at something smooth, you might think it's smooth in the outside, but in reality, at the microscopic level, it's pretty bumpy. So take a look at this aluminum foil. On the outside, it looks really smooth, and you can even smooth it out more with your hands, but the smoothest you can get it, it doesn't really matter how smooth you make it, it's still going to be bumpy at the microscopic level, just because that's how it is. And depending on the surface, it might be more bumpy or not. I mean, aluminum foil is fairly smooth on the outside, and a, a shiny silver pot is smooth on the outside. But if you take a piece of sandpaper, that's really, really quite rough, or even some asphalt is very, very rough compared to, to this. So the thing I want you to get out of this is that every surf surface, no matter what, is going to have some sort of like bumps on it. There is nothing that is perfectly smooth. And that's why there's always friction, because if you can imagine this picture, all right, if this surface rubs against another surface, obviously these little holes and valleys are going to rub against the other holes and valleys in the other surface, and they're just going to all kind of link together. They're not going to rub across perfectly. So that's kind of the why behind friction and why it happens, but friction by definition is a force that opposes motion between any surfaces that are touching. Go ahead and write that down. Friction is a force that opposes motion between any surfaces that are touching. So if I were to rub aluminum foil and my hand together, that would be friction. Um, if I were to rub my hands together, that's friction. If I walk on the ground, my shoes are moving across the ground and they're touching the ground, that's friction. Anytime you have two surfaces that are touching and there's movement involved, there will be friction. And friction is always going to go against the, the motion, wherever the motion is, is going. So if you ever draw a free body diagram, wherever the motion is going, whatever direction the car is traveling or the object is traveling, the friction will obviously be in the opposite direction. Friction is a pretty simple concept, but people have been remarkably creative when it comes to using friction to their advantage. So for example, pencils. If you can imagine this paper at the microscopic level, it's probably a lot like the foil. In fact, more, more bumpy than the foil is possibly, but at the microscopic level, there's probably lots of little valleys and holes and things like that that something could seep into. And anyway, this, the pencil, when you drag a pencil across a paper, little teensy weensy pieces of graphite fall into those little valleys in the paper, those little kind of cracks and crevices, and they stay there. And that's why you can actually see your writing later on, whether it's a pen or a pencil or something like that. In a bike tire, the only reason you can actually stop is because of friction. Without friction, there would be no rubbing in between the bike and the brake pad, and you would crash, which is seen over here in this picture, which would then lead to another bad effect, which is the friction between your skin and the road, which is kind of awful. Instead of, you know, ink and lead filling in the little holes in the surface, it's just your skin. Mm. Yeah, it's nasty. Happened to me before a few times. And then last but not least, this little kid right here, he just seems kind of sad. He's trying to slide, but it's just not going to work, man. You got you to gotta lift your feet up. That's good slide technique. If you put your feet down, it's too much friction. So you gotta slide on your back. You stick your feet way up, and it's super fun. And in Michigan, we used to like totally throw a bunch of snow on the slide, and it made the slide like four times as fast, which was really, really fun. And I feel sorry for Texans because you don't, you don't get enough snow. I wish you would get more. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you it's really, really fun when you put snow on the slide. When it comes to manipulating friction, there are two factors you need to consider. One of which is the roughness of the surface. If the surface is rough, it's going to have a lot of friction. If it's smooth, it will have less friction. The skater in this picture doesn't have a whole lot of friction to worry about because ice is very smooth and they've probably sharpened their skates. The second factor you need to consider is the weight of the object. If the object is really heavy, the surfaces are really going to be compacted together. There's going to be a lot more contact which is going to cause more friction. So in general, heavier objects cause more friction than objects that are light. It's kind of like if you take a huge heavy box and you try and slide it across the floor, it's not going to slide very well, but if the box is filled with like feathers or packing peanuts, it's going to slide no problem. 
and that's because the light box doesn't have as much contact because it's not being like pressed into the ground. But the heavy box might have all kinds of books in it and they're like pressing into the ground which causes more contact between the box and the floor. And to get back to this skating picture, it's kind of interesting because skaters, if you're, if you're hardcore, you actually sharpen your skates. And sharpening your sk skates actually decreases friction. So think about that for a second, guys. Why do you think sharpening your skates would decrease friction? Well, if you sharpen your skates, it's more, the, the blade is more to a point, you know? And if you don't sharpen your skates, it's kind of like a flat surface. And so which of those two is going to have more contact area, the sharp skate or the not sharp skate? Should have answered the not sharp skate. If it's a, sh a sharpened skate, it's going to be very pointy and it's only going to touch a very small portion of the ice, whereas the not sharpened skate is going to be kind of flattened down and have more contact area. And because of this, you know, a sharpened skate is going to be a lot smoother than one that's not sharpened. And one thing to kind of tack onto the end here, if you ever want to increase the uh, or decrease the friction on a surface, you can always add a lubricant. Lubricants are things like oil, graphite, anything that's kind of uh, liquid and slimy works great. Soap is awesome. But just think about it. At the surface, if your surface is filled with all kinds of bumps, what do you think a liquid like oil would do to that surface? Yeah, it's going to fill it up. It's going to fill up those little cracks and crevices so that they're not um, you know, able to slow anything down. And that's exactly what oil does within car engines and what soap does between your hands when you kind of slide them together. That's why it smooths them out because it fills in those little holes. Lastly, one of the cool properties of friction is that it produces heat. This is nice sometimes, but it's not nice in other times. So one way that it's nice is when you're you know, lighting a match. The kinetic energy of you sliding your hand or fingers across the, uh, the match box gives just enough thermal energy of that match to get it going. And a time when it's not nice is when your car overheats because there's too much friction inside of your engine. Why does this happen? Why does it turn into heat? Well, when you rub your hands together, like on a cold day, you rub them together to get warm, what you're actually doing is, you know, you're taking kinetic energy, the mo motion of your hands, and that kinetic energy gets transferred into thermal energy because as you move your hands together, the molecules in your hands are touching each other. And when you start moving, those molecules also start moving. They kind of start to absorb some of the motion from your, your hands. And so as they move faster, they end up getting more thermal energy and the temperature goes up. Well, same thing happens in a car engine too. If there's not enough lubrication, if there's not enough oil, the metal surfaces will rub together and they create a ton of heat. So much so that the engine will literally melt and you'll, you'll just totally have an engine meltdown. And so as you guys get to driving pretty soon, make sure you always get an oil change whenever your mechanic or whenever your parents tell you to. Very, very important. Well, that's all for the video, guys. Um, we define friction as a force that opposes motion between surfaces that are touching. We identified factors that affect friction, such as the weight of the object and also the roughness or the smoothness of the surface. And then finally, we just explained how friction can turn into heat. Pretty awesome stuff. Take care.